So in today's video, guys, we're going over part two of the biggest questions to come out of Doom Patrol Season 1. Uh, some of that are even more interesting than the part one video. For example, why did Mr. Nobody hate Niles Calder so much? Why specifically did he want to ruin his life? And, and what's going to happen to Danny the Brick now? What, what's going on with him? And where did Flex Mantello go? Well, we're going to go over that and more in today's video. <laughs> How's it going Doom Patrollers? Welcome to my part two of the biggest questions coming out of Doom Patrol season one and these questions are just if not more interesting than what came out of uh, the part one video. So I'm going to get straight into this video to be honest because these require quite a bit of a lengthy explanation. Uh, so if you go on to like this video guys as viewer interaction is the most important because YouTube does not like to send notifications and all that jazz. Uh, just leave a like on it if you do enjoy it. Even comment your thoughts on some of these questions and just leave me your thoughts in general if you want to see or what videos you want to see coming out of Doom Patrol, uh, you know, season two videos or whatever. So question number one is uh, from uh, Scamster3 and uh, Ectoplasmic Entity5. Uh, why did Mr. Nobody want to ruin Niles' life specifically? And I'm not sure why, uh, this is from Ectoplasmic, Morden hates Niles. Like, obviously we got that vibe, didn't we? But yes, Niles shot Fuchs and resulting in Mr. Nobody, but I, I thought he likes being Mr. Nobody. So let's go over that one first. So I've actually seen a lot of people ask this question. Just why was Mr. Nobody after Niles colder so much? Did something happen between them that we all missed? And I have to admit that the show didn't exactly give a mega transparent reason for this. Although the answer certainly is there. But it just kind of flies over a lot of heads and is open to some interpretation. So essentially let's add each piece up from what we learned about Niles Calder and Eric Morden, aka Mr. Nobody in Doom Patrol Season 1. In the first episode, we knew that the Chief was worried about the Doom Patrol having accidentally alerted Mr. Nobody of his whereabouts and so wanted himself and the Doom Patrol to get the hell out of town. And that's when we got that very moment in the bus when Mr. Nobody appears and Chief frustratingly says Paraguay, which gives us a teaser to their somewhat origin of meeting. So Paraguay really is the catalyst for Mr. Nobody and the Chief, because it's where they first met. The only storytelling we get of this first meeting though is truly through Von Fuchs' puppet show, where we get it explained to us that Chief ran in when Mr. Nobody was ongoing his transformation, Chief shot up the place, including a bit of the machine which you could assume contributed to the creation of Mr. Nobody, and also stole something from Von Fuchs, which we still don't know what exactly it was to this day. So ever since this moment, you can assume that Mr. Nobody was aware of who Chief was, but also we can't forget how Eric Morden is such a wannabe villain. Doom Patrol explored this in episode 14, Penultimate Patrol, and many other episodes to be honest, in how he pitched all of these ideas to the Brotherhood of Evil, but got kicked out, and was reminded that he would always be a nobody. We can't forget too how Mr. Nobody is very much a storyteller and lives for weaving this villainous relationship he has with the Chief. This was also explored in the past with the original Doom Patrol and Niles facing Mr. Nobody with the giant ass balloon <laughs> attached to the jukebox which drove everyone insane. But also with what we explored just a second ago, he wanted to inflict what he felt onto Niles, the insecurity feeling of being a nobody, making someone else feel that makes him feel good too very sadistically now there is also the line from the finale which i find very fascinating where mr nobody says you know i huffed and i puffed but it was you all along wasn't it niles you destroyed them just like you destroyed eric Morden. And Chief replies saying, so you've had your revenge. Now, this is interesting because it implies that Mr. Nobody is kind of low-key a bit salty for what Niles did when he came into Von Fuchs's chamber room when Eric Morden was transforming into Mr. Nobody. But I find this a bit strange because really, Mr. Nobody very blatantly thrives off the powers that were granted to him, which was also somewhat down to Chief. The best excuse I have in regards to this seemingly contradicting line is that of course Eric Morden was unhinged before becoming Mr. Nobody in the show's version. We can see that. But when he changed in Von Fuchs's chamber, which you know was contributed to by Chief, he went even more insane and would never be the same again, which goes along with his character in the comics anyway. 
However, in, in the comics, he, he wasn't actually mad beforehand. So this is why this line almost appears to address the more comic run than what they presented in episode one with his origin and him being very eager in those scenes in the first episode and a bit unhinged, clearly. Hence why I say it's a bit confusing and contradicting. Ultimately, my take is that as much as he loves it, like his, his powers and everything is Mr. Nobody, a part of him will always blame Chief for those effects, regardless of his thriving nature as Mr. Nobody. I mean, perhaps it's the thought of knowing how unhinged he is now, compared to perhaps how he was a lot more humane beforehand. And I'm sure that there could have been an even deeper meaning explored to this, that they could have gone down, but maybe just couldn't explore it enough by the end of the series. So the next question is from uh, Father Potato 4 and I've got another example as well from Ruben uh, Moraes 5. I believe you asked a question in episode in part one, I can't remember. Uh, now that Danny's a brick, do you think we can expect to see Danny the bungalow? And is Danny uh, just a brick now at the end of the season? Danny and co uh, as printed on the brick. So yeah, what the heck is going on with Danny and what can we expect maybe? So what did happen to Danny in the street? Well, this is also another comic book nod and how Danny after that whopping explosion from the painting that, you know, was caused by Larry ripping through that interdimensional kind of little breachy thingy my bobby uh, just remains a brick that displays Danny and co. Uh, for those wondering if Danny is okay, uh, they are. Don't worry about that. Essentially, all of Danny's sentience is entirely in that one brick. So as of now, they are Danny the Brick, but we could see Danny the Bungalow. For those of you who don't know, Danny has even gone on to evolve into Danny the World, quite literally leaving the DC Universe and becoming a whole planet for people of all dimensions to seek refuge on. So would they do that? I, I honestly wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I think we all know not to be surprised with Doom Patrol, but I couldn't imagine it happening early, I mean, this early into the show. Maybe if we get a few more seasons, we might see along that point. But I trust that Danny will perhaps continue to grow. As they explained in Danny Patrol, uh, you know, Danny thrives off people's happiness on the street. If the party stops, then Danny's heart stops right along with it. So perhaps the Doom Patrol looking after them initially will help Danny evolve back into the street. But perhaps in other iterations first, like the bungalow, before becoming what they once were, Danny the street. Uh, either way, I'm super excited to see how all of this unfolds. Seeing the Doom Patrol care for a little baby Danny Brick is just going to be hilarious. Next question is from uh, Bazinga King EU6. Uh, what do you think will happen to Beard Hunter and Mr. Nobody in the painting slash white space? So I'm not sure anything will so much as like happen to them as though that they are going to be very very bored. I mean, this painting was originally a creating of Mr. Nobody's, which ultimately screwed himself over, which he admits to the Doom Patrol in that finale episode, as his fantastic idea he had just reduced him to a husk, which, you know, I take as him saying that he is just a powerless, former, useless version or husk of his former br brilliant self. So this painting anyway is a nod to the Brotherhood of Dada or Dada, whatever way you want to pronounce that, which is, you know, a villainous supergroup formed by Mr. Nobody in the comics, uh, who even trapped the whole of Paris in a painting before ultimately getting trapped in there themselves. So I guess this is somewhat their adaptation of that with Mr. Nobody alongside Beard Hunter getting trapped in there in the Doom Patrol finale. Now I believe Mr. Nobody did escape the painting that ate Paris with the help of the Brotherhood of Dada, but obviously this is a different show. Although it being a nod and so remains unclear as to how he will ever escape in this iteration, obviously the writers of this show are fantastic with their wacky ideas and their adaptation from comic book material to the, you know, slightly altered live action show. As I always say, things aren't copy and pasted from comic book adaptation, so who knows exactly how Mr. Nobody and Beard Hunter will get out. Regardless, there's just so much history to Eric Morden, decades and decades and decades of him being Mr. Nobody, uh, so they could easily write in something that we didn't really see on screen in those years. Maybe he has already made a few friends and a very kind of low-key brotherhood of Dada, or Dada. Here we go again. But ultimately, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but I don't even know if they would let him escape in season two, because then why wouldn't he just be the main villain again? He's he's really overpowered on the show. I just love some of these usernames. Terminal Ant 225. I, I, I need this to be my channel name. Uh, how did Flex escape his comic book? And where did Flex go? So yeah, what, what was actually going on with Flex? Um, and how did he save the Dannysons? 
So I think your question might be referring to did he enter with the Doom Patrol into the white space when they were going to rescue Chief for the first time? I mean, if it is, then you have to assume that he didn't. I mean, we can't forget that Flex Mentallo uh, can open up doors to places. Uh, that doesn't mean he also has to travel through them. So at that point, he only opened it up for the Doom Patrol and remained on Danny the street. But I've also seen quite a few questions as to where the heck did Flex go? Like, what happened to him? And this was actually answered for us in the final episode, in that in the Danny Daily, uh, on the newspaper, on Danny the Street, there was a headline, Hero Flex brought Danny Zins to safety. And Danny Zins are the citizens on Danny the Street, if you remember. So you have to think that Flex, yet again, opened up a doorway to another place and escorted all the Danny Zins to safety. Of course, like, we don't exactly know where he took them, but I'm sure we will see them all return when Danny the Brick has become Danny the Street again. So Miles Hobson uh, 5 asked, do you think we'll get to see more of Jane's personalities in season two? So I definitely think we will. I mean, Jane has so many personalities. So naturally, when figuring out season one, it makes sense that they only wanted to focus on just a handful. Of course, like we did see more, but we only mainly saw Diane Guerrero focus on like Hammerhead, Baby Doll, Penny uh, Farthing, Karen, Dr. Harrison, and maybe a couple of others. So I think while maintaining a couple of main ones, probably like Baby Doll in season two and perhaps Hammerhead, they will also perhaps bench a couple. Not that we still won't see them, but for other personalities to have their opportunity uh, to shine in more screen time. So this is such an interesting thing I love about Jane's character, and it must be such a fun character to play, because in terms of how many seasons Doom Patrol gets, they can just focus on new and different ones each season, and that is just so great. So the DC Logical asks, uh, do you think that we'll see Cyborg's full-on metallic suit like suggested in the painting that Jane made? So this is a very good question, and I think it's a little bit of yes and a little bit of no. What we've learned now is that that whole plot was a big load of paranoia from Mr. Nobody, but there definitely were elements, real elements, when Cyborg was talking to Grid, and it was weird. I mean, I definitely think that we can't discount that, but I don't think we're going to see a rogue grid anytime soon. But this wouldn't be the only way to achieve more cybernetics for Victor. It's totally possible that he could get more injured and we see the nanites heal him more. But realistically, we also have to think about the show. As, as amazing as DC Universe shows look with their production, and I know everyone isn't unanimous in that opinion, this would mean adding more prosthetics to Cyborg uh, and borderline CGI constantly if you, you know, wanted to see a Cyborg as depicted in Jane's painting, you know, with arms, just everything. So I think ultimately I'll have to say don't get your hopes up. I don't think the show would do a full-on Cyborg arms and, you know, even down to the chin strap on his face. I think the chin strap would be more doable in terms of prosthetics and, you know, maybe even the arms. Hell, like, what do I really know? They've they've done stuff with Robot Man uh, with prosthetics all over the body, but that suit is very restricting and that's fine for that character because he only has to move like a robot, obviously. But Victor needs to be able to move in that suit. But production and design in the industry are always in flux and improving, so who knows what we might see in relation to this in the show's future. And last question, guys, and I wanted to include this because there's always questions like this, and this is from Riff, uh, Riff Vid Core 6. Uh, will Doom Patrol be on the stream, uh, be streaming on Netflix outside from the US region uh, since the DC Universe streaming service isn't available outside of the US. So I can only assume so because Titans aired in October and finished its season just before Christmas and you know it was already available on Netflix in the UK for example by January 11th. So you know that was super quick. So I think the same you could only assume would happen with Doom Patrol but I think it's going to HBO too. So it's not like I can guarantee that Doom Patrol will do the exact same thing that Titans did but let's just hope that it does. So other than that, everyone, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, just do me a favor and leave a thumbs up on it just to show your support for more Doom Patrol content. I have quite a few other ideas in terms of Doom Patrol content uh, coming over, I guess, the duration of uh, till we get season two. Uh, so just, yeah, leave me a comment for more suggestions and just leave a like for more support. Other than that, guys, follow me on Twitter and everything else in the description down below. Talk to me directly about Doom Patrol in my Discord server. That invite is in the link down below as well. Um, but thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a lovely rest of your day. I'll see you Doom Patrollers, as always, in whatever Doom Patrol video there is next.